Hi, welcome to Patch of Day 31. I'm going to make a, um, a crossfader to crossfade uh, two sounds according to their frequency content. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is to build the inner, inner workings. Oh yeah, I got this idea from someone on the Max forums who was asking how to do it, so I thought, yeah, okay, I know how to do that. So let's do um, the inner workings, which will be in the PFFT first. So I'll take some FFT ins. So we need an FFT in, it needs an argument one. We can duplicate that because we need our second sound source coming in over here. And we're going to use the index object to read through a buffer. Um, and we will um, call that buffer XF, let's say. It doesn't exist yet. Probably Max is complaining about that. So we're going to read through that index <coughs> using the FFT bin index there. Okay, and then we're just going to simply multiply the real and imaginary um, by whatever comes out of that um, index out of the buffer there. And then I'm going to read the inverse of whatever is in that buffer. Let's straighten these up. Like this is already easy in the new max. All right, so I'm going to read the index, um, the inverse of that. Sorry. So we need an exclamation mark minus tilde um, signal subtraction inlets reversed. Yes, and then we need an argument of one, so one minus whatever comes in here. Perfect. And we can just duplicate these to hold down the um, option key. Can't remember what it is on the Windows again. Uh, we can multiply our second signal inlet by that inverse value. So this will be the, um, the gain, let's say, for the bins on the, um, on the first inlet, and this will be the inverse of the gain on the bins for the second inlet. Then we need an FFT out, FFT out with an argument one, since it always wants to have an argument. All right, so real, imaginary, real, imaginary, Perfect. We can save this as something. Um, yeah, I'll save this as uh, X fader, something like that. Okay, so now we need the outside world. We need to put in the, um, well, I suppose we can start with the PFFT. PFFT um, X fader is what I just called it, and then an argument for the size of the FFT. It's not going to find it immediately because we have to save this patcher down in the same area. So I can call this um, pad31. I think I already made one for that. So pad31, yeah. And as soon as I reinstantiate this, change anything on it. Like that number four, for example. Okay, so we need the um, buffer that we created back over here, which was called um, XF. So I need to create a buffer called XF. XF and it can have a duration of uh, doesn't even need 200 milliseconds. <coughs> doesn't need more than 130. Uh, a bit more. Okay, so then we are going to play some sounds through here, um, two different sounds. So we'll just make an effort to play for each side of this thing. Obviously, you might make your whole thing a bit more complicated <coughs> with a message to open. Uh, let's put in here Cherokee. Dot AIF comma loop one comma one. So we just got that Cherokee thing looping over and over. And then on the other side, I can just duplicate that all and put in over this side, which we put in a jongly dot AIF. So we've got two separate sounds. Um, and this crossfader. It's going to all be set at zero at the moment. We need a way to write values into the um, into this buffer here. So I'm going to make a, an object called peak tilde, which we can write sample values. We need to give it the name of the index we're writing into, which is XF. And then you can give if you give peak, it's just like a table. If you give it a list of two values, it will be the um, the 
index to write to and then the, the value to write. So the value we're going to write into that because it's an audio buffer is going to be a float and the index can be an integer. Okay, uh, I'm going to use the um, I table, which I don't even know what that looks like on the palette. I'm sure I could find it. Um, graphic display of a table. Let's just have a quick look on the palette. Oh, the object explorer is what it's now called. Okay. User interface objects. Ooh, interface. Uh, yeah, see? I haven't been playing around with Max enough to know where any of these. Oh, there it is. IT will find. Good enough. All right, so um, even though you know our, our PFFT size is 1024, um, most of the frequency content is down in the low bins anyway. All the interest stuff that we're interested in crossfading. Um, first thing we're going to, since we're going to be using these values to draw uh, these crossfade values, I suppose we're going to need to divide those by 127 for the floating point because we want them to be zero to one that we're going to use in the um, in the uh, buffer there and the, to give it index every time every time you edit the i table it bangs out this side which is perfect for an Uzi I think so we'll make an Uzi with um, 128 so every time you put a bang in there it sticks, sends out 128 bangs or out the right side it also outputs an index that index starts at 1, so we need it to start at 0, so we'll subtract 1 from that before sending it in to read the table and send it out as an index for here as well. Um, so let's, just to be really pedantic about this, let's use a trigger object in between so that we're triggering the integer twice. Um, the trigger object is really great just to make sure things aren't going in the wrong order. So we know we want to get the value out to store before we use it as an index to store the value in that um, buffer. Right, so that little looks kind of neat. And then the last thing we need is a bang over out here to bang that. Um, can you actually move these patch cords? Sure. Not really. Um, you can hide them, I guess. Um, not really got the hang of uh, Max 6 yet, but you know, it'll all come in time. I guess we need a DAC. Um, let's give, go for an easy DAC. Sure. And I guess you know this, you've seen this Explorer thing now. You can drag objects into the patcher now from that Explorer, which is kind of cool, I guess. All right. Um, put that in there. So now, if I start this playing, it should be all Cherokee. Uh, oh, John Lee, sorry. <laughs> and now I can put some Cherokee in there, like. Right. Anyway, you can label this um, graph to show what's going on. The table, you can make a comment, see the comment, um, and the way it would work. And I kind of, um, to label the y-axis, you could say, here's my Cherokee sound. And at the bottom here is my John Lee sound. And every time I have <coughs> anywhere, and this is frequency across the, across the um, x-axis. So, frequency. Oops, hey, what went on there? Okay, fine. Um, John Lee down there. Okay, so yeah, every time you have... You know, here's going to have a bunch of low frequency on the Cherokee and then some uh, mid frequency on the Zhongli and then a whole bunch of high frequency on the on the Cherokee again. Anyway, that's the answer to a question that I read on, on the forums and I'll, I'll see you again with the patch the day 32.